Now here is a question uh, one number one oh nine on the textbook page one three three. The question uh, there's three objects connected by a cord, and uh, and then on each side, and the two pulleys connected. Uh, the two string and then uh, the two objects and go over the pulley left and another one on the right. So ob obviously you can see this block 20, uh, 20, 10 kg and 25 kg here. So the object is going to move. So and because they all move together, so we can uh, sure that they have same magnitude of acceleration, but different direction. And like this one is going up. Okay, so uh, the question asking for what is the acceleration of the three objects? You know, they have the same ac acceleration, same magnitude, uh, and then B find the tension in each of the uh, the two strings. So asking for the tension right in this string, uh, same as here, in this string, same as here. Right. The reason the string, uh, the tension same here and here is because the pulley uh, is massless and friction free. Okay. So let's first of all, you know, uh, draw a free body diagram on each one. So uh, on this body, let's label this as M1. On M1, so obviously we have M1G. That's a gravity acting on this block. And on the string, there's a tension force. Let's call this T1. And that's it. There's not uh, no other forces acting on it. So just this is a, a, a the middle block. We also have a, so let's label this as M2. So we also have uh, M2G here, and force going up. That's gonna be the Fn. Fn. And on the right side, uh, now the t tension. Right side is a string, so uh, there must be a tension force going this way. So we call it T2. And on this side, the tension force, same as T1, is pulling on the M2. So T1. And besides, uh, the M2 is also moving to the right side, so there's a frictional force acting this way. So we label FF. Okay, so it's a lot of forces acting on this one. Uh, and then come to the M3. M3, so very similar we have M3G, that's uh, gravity. And then another force is the same uh, tension force as in this section of the string, so T2. Okay, so based on the, uh, the free body diagram, which shows all the forces acting on each body. So we can apply. So now step is apply uh, Newton second law to each mass. So M1, you can see M1, there's only two forces. So it must, must have a net force going the same direction as acceleration, so that's why we use T1, which should be bigger than the M1G. That's the net force acting on M1 equals M1A. See, Newton's second law, right? And by the way, Newton's second law take this form F net equals MA. So that's exactly what we did this way. Okay, for M2. Uh, we also set up the Newton second, but uh, as we know, there's only acceleration uh, to the right. So, so we look at onto direction. So we have three forces: T2 pulling this way, and T1 and uh, FF. They're all pulling the opposite direction. So uh, we obviously we should have T2 bigger than the sum of that uh, of that two forces. So we use T minus T1 and minus. Uh, Okay, let's just put a take away the bracket. Uh, T two minus T one and minus the friction force. So that's going to be the net force acting on M two. So uh, equals M two a. And by the way, the the friction force F F here. 
FF should equal to the mu times Fn. And because Fn equals uh, M2G, so it equals mu M2G. Okay, so M, the Fn equals M2G in only uh, happens in this case, not always. So it's not a like one of the formula. Okay, so then M3. M3, look at the M3, so exception is going down. So we must have the M3, G subtracted 2 as the net force acting on M3. So it was M3, A. So if we replace the FF with mu M2, G, so we have three equations and uh, we can add up. So we just do one more step. So this one is still the same, G1 minus M. 1G equals M1A. This is T2 minus T1 minus mu M2G equals M2A. Would Manson Ho please come down to the office? Manson Ho, M2G minus T2 should equal M3A. So here you go, we three, have three equations, one, two, three. That's enough for us to solve the three variables, T1, T2, and A. So normally, if you add all the two, uh, three equations, that's going to be an easy way to do. Uh, to, so you can see if you add them together, so you can cancel the T1, T1, T2, T2. So what you have, have left is M2G. Uh, minus M1G and minus mu M2G equals. So on the right side, if you add all the three MA together, so you can factor the A out. So you got M1 plus M2. Okay, so obviously, uh, again, you can tell on the left side that's a net force acting on the system, the three masses system. And on the right side, it is MA, which the M is the sum of all three masses. Well, you can see that's the mass of the system. Okay, so we can solve the A equals uh, on the top we have M2G minus M1G minus mu m2g divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3 so i'm going to save the time to to do the calculation so the answer would be 0 0.597 meter per second squared okay then if you plug in the a into the equation one here you can find out the t1 T1 is going to be M1 uh, A plus M1 G equals going to be 104 Newton. And then you can also plug, uh, plug in the A into the equation 3. Uh, you can find out T2. So T2 is going to be M2 G minus. Uh, Oh, sorry, this is M3. So this is M3 here. So it should be M3 right here as well. M3 uh, minus T M3A equals 230 Newton. Okay, so we solved the problem. Uh, just to have a quick summary. Uh, the first step is always try to understand the question and then uh, once you understand you should be able to figure out that the force is acting on each body so that's uh, going to be shown on the uh, three body diagram or each mass and then you always apply Newton's second law okay so apply uh, Newton's second law to each body and then for each uh, body you can set up an equation right uh, and then after you're done, equation one, two, three, and uh, do some simplification, and then uh, try to solve this system of equations. 
So normally, uh, the, the standard way, uh, you can add all these equations, and then you can always cancel the forces, like acting in, uh, in, as a tension force uh, between the masses. Because if you look at it as a system, all the tension force, they, they, they become the internal forces, so you don't need to count them. And then if you look at the system here, all the three forces here, they appear to be external forces. So uh, that's a net force, uh, equals the MA, uh, which is the mass of the whole system. And then easy, have one variable in this equation, so solve it, you get an acceleration, then plug in each one, you get a T1 and T2. Okay.